Welcome to the video on how to install your Onefinity Elite Masso controller rotary from JTEC Photonics. Uh, if you purchase this, you will have in the package, you'll have your rotary, um, you will have the cable that hooks up to the rotary, and you will have the cable that we're going to install right now. This cable will go into your Masso controller, so we're going to get started um, by jumping right in and grabbing our Allen wrenches. We're going to need a number four and a number 2.5. Um, to open up your Masso. So let's get started. All right, first things first, before we start taking this apart, we're gonna check to see whether or not you have a connector uh, installed already, because we're gonna be installing this, this basically this Molex uh, style connector uh, into the back of your Masso. Um, but in future versions, uh, you might have already have this installed from the factory. So let's just check and make sure that you're not watching this two years from now and you have it installed. So. You're gonna see in the back here, there's going to be a place for all these connectors, all these cables in here, and we're going to be installing it. Um, there's gonna be one uh, that's gonna be, in this case, it's empty, but it's gonna say, it's right next to the, the tool setter. It's gonna say right next to the tool setter here. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that that um, is, space is empty for this. If it's empty, then we're gonna be putting this cable in there. All right, so we're going to take our M4 Allen key and undo all four of these screws that attach the Masso together. I pre-did these so that you might take a little bit longer than I am. And then we're going to open up the Masso carefully. Just make sure you don't bump it too much. And then we get into inside of the Masso here. Okay, now that we've opened up the controller, just make sure that you don't um, touch any of the extra wires here. What we're looking for is on the right-hand side here, there's gonna be a bunch of motor um, connectors. You can see X, Y, and Z. The one we're after is gonna be this A axis. You can see that there's a, a green Phoenix terminal in there. We're gonna be replacing that with our con connector. So we're just gonna pull this out, grab it, and pull it out towards you. So that just comes out and we're going to um, put this aside. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is grab our uh, 2.5 Allen key and remove these four um, screws down here holding this cable assembly together. Um, so we're just gonna do that real quick. One thing to note is when you get these screws out, um, you want to uh, kind of support the back of this so that it doesn't fall. We want to remember, we want to make sure that everything is uh, not moved around as much as possible. We want to keep all these wires just like they were. So you can feel when that last one gets disattached, the whole assembly wants to kind of go down because these, these cables down on the bottom are, are going to be pulling it down. All right. All right, so now that we've removed those four screws, you can get to the back cable assembly here. Um, you can see the empty hole for it uh, right down here where my thumb is, where the tool setter and the laser and the um, XY probe is. So we're gonna take our um, connector, make sure that you have the key. There's gonna be a, a little slot on, on one side of it. Line it up with the, the hole. You'll see that there's a little, um, a little indent cut out for the orientation of it. And we're just gonna basically take this and push it into that back of the plastic and push it through and it will click in. And that is all you need to do. All right, now there's gonna be the, the green section, uh, wire part. We're gonna put it through this hole, so we wanna make sure that it goes into the hole where all these other cables from the back are coming from. And then, uh, so I grab my four screws again, and I'm just gonna keep on holding this assembly, cable assembly, and I'm gonna get them threaded in here. So just put on all four of your screws, holding this wire assembly back on. OK, 
Okay, we got all four screws in and tightened. Okay, so we're going to take our connector that we had that, with the green Phoenix terminal, and we're just going to pop it into the A axis slot where we removed the green Phoenix terminal before and press it in fully. And then we're going to um, close up the Masso and put the screws back in. All right, so now we're going to take our, our cable um, that's going to attach to the rotary and going to put it into our new connector we just put on. And it should snap right in. It's going to be a little loose, so you just got to make sure that you just get it connected and don't push it all the way in. Uh, don't push the connector through. Um, just make sure it attaches there and is connected. All right, now we're going to take the other end of this cable. It's going to be this long um, JST connector that's going to go into the back of the rotary motor. So just, there's going to be a key on it, so just make sure your key is in the correct direction. And you're going to hear it click in to the motor, and now that part's uh, connected. Okay, last part of this is going to be to connect this um, JST cable to the power box. The power box is going to be the one with that button on it that has all the power connectors for it. So there should be an open spot. Um, ours is kind of hiding behind that cable right there. And so I'm going to go and plug this guy right into that connector. And that should be it. So the last thing we're going to do is check the setup and uh, test the, the rotary to see if it's working. Let's go into uh, the F1 setup screen on your Masso. Um, just press enter for the password or if you, you know, get past that. And then we're going to go over here on the left and there's going to be one that says A axis. We're going to double click on that one. And I want to make sure that these um, uh, settings are correct um, for you. The degrees per revolution should be 360. That's going to be fixed. Uh, drive pulses per revolution are 7,200. The maximum feed rate is uh, 50,000 degrees per minute. Acceleration is 700. Uh, travel minimum is zero. And travel maximum is 60,000. Um, backlash is zero, and it's going to have angular axis checked. So make sure uh, that you have these settings um, correct, and then we're just going to press save. And then we're going to go to, uh, they're going to go and test the, um, the A axis by jogging it. So we're going to go to jog and probing over here, and we're going to click on continuous mode, and then I'm going to put the feed rate um, percentage up a little bit. I'm just going to why don't I just go up to 100%? And then I'm going to um, see there's a the A axis, there's a minus and plus here. I'm just going to press the plus and hold it down here. And you can see over here that it's rotating. You can see the JTEC logo spinning. Um, and that's just an easy way for you to check to see whether or not it's actually working. So I'm going back and forth. Um, all right, so for uh, setting up your program, we recommend using Lightburn. Um, they have a rotary function in the software that's really good for um, getting your uh, files for the Masso controller for the rotary axis um, completed. And so that's it. Uh, installation is pretty easy. Uh, now you can do your tups, cups and tumblers um, and all your other fun uh, engraving for rotary with the JTEC laser on the Onefinity Elite series machines. For more information, check out our website at jtechphotonics.com, and that's where the store will be for you to buy the rotary. Thanks.